design is everywhere. It's behind everything we need to create, no matter if it's a physical or a virtual object. We need to design buildings, engines, machines, and products. And in chemistry, we design new molecules, chemical ingredients, and drugs. And in computer science, we design abstract forms such as neural network architectures, programming languages, data structures, and so on. But the problem with all these designs is that they're still mostly manually created. Now, what do I mean by manually? We start by designing an object, sketching it or recording it in some form. Then we have to build it in real or virtual world. And only after that, we can test its performance. And if you're unsatisfied with what we obtained, we have to go back to the beginning, alter the design parameters, and iterate all over again until we're happy with the final result. So we can do a lot of trial and error until we get the solution we are looking for. Now we live in this era of big AI success and powerful algorithms. Wouldn't it be better if we developed algorithms to help us determine best performing designs? Let me show you an example. Most of the robots we see nowadays are designed in this way where an experienced engineer or a graduate student determines a reasonable structure for the robot and then learns or, or defines controllers or the parameters needed for the robot to be able to move. And there's a lot of trial and error and tweaking of these parameters, design parameters, in order to get the robot that can do a good job. And obviously, these robots can traverse different kinds of terrains, like natural environments, like flat grounds, even climb ladders. But they're limited to pretty simple structures. They're either two-legged, four legs, they maybe have wheels, but they're not necessarily the most optimal ones for traversing a given terrain or doing a given task. So can we do better than that? Can we find a better way to design robots? And it turns out that if we surprisingly take some ideas from natural language processing, we can create grammars that can automatically generate hundreds of thousands of robot designs. Now these grammars, or this grammar that we create, is inspired by animals and insects, and it consists of a set of rules how and where you can add more of robot parts, like body parts, tails, wheels, different joint types, and so on. And this is all done automatically, and all the robots, because they're inspired by animals and insects, are able to walk. Now the only problem is that not all of them are good on every single terrain. For example, this little fellow with extra long limbs is not the most optimal for crossing the ridges. And another example, this wheeled robot has this added mechanism for climbing, but would be much better off going downhill than climbing stairs. And because we have hundreds of thousands of possible robot designs, we cannot simply just generate all of them and simulate all of them and then determine which one is the best for our task. So once again, we'll look for an algorithmic solution here. And what we discovered is that we can train a neural network to learn heuristics and quickly determine what are the promising designs, not having to explore all possible designs, but actually just looking at fractions of these robot structures. So it can quickly navigate a space of promising designs and identify what are the best ones for our tasks. And not only that the algorithm can output an optimized structure of the robot, but it also outputs an optimized controllers, or essentially the brain that tells the robot how to move. So for example, this interesting structure is optimized to climb an unevenly stepped terrain, which is one of the most difficult tasks for robots. It has these front hooks for climbing, but simple back legs to save the energy. Another example is the structure that is optimized to avoid series of walls. It has this extra long neck, and it can quickly pivot around the front legs. And it's proven to be much more efficient than any other conventional design to do this task. And to be honest, who would have thought of such structure manually, right? This is really powered by an algorithm. And just to be controversial here and say AI is not a solution for everything, I would like to show you another design challenge where we had to use hardcore math to solve the problem. Say you take a sheet of flexible but inextensible material, like this thin acrylic here. So it can bend freely, but it cannot stretch. So it cannot approximate even a simple shape, such as a sphere. So you can try to bend it around the sphere, but you wouldn't get a sphere out of it. But if you insert a regular pattern of slits into the very same material, all of a sudden it can stretch, it can wrap around the sphere, and it can approximate a much larger class of shapes. So these slits turn 
an inextensible material to become oxidic, which means that if you stretch it in one direction, it also expands in all other directions. And these materials are now showing up everywhere because of their attractive properties. And they come up in many different forms, like this three-dimensional foam, for example. They've been studied by Nike for shoe soles, by BMW for concept cars. They've been used for sensors, art, fashion, and so on. But the problem with all these designs you see up here is that they're limited to very simple geometries. They are either planar, spherical, or cylindrical, but not more than that. So our question was, can we find a way to approximate any given target surface, a complex surface such as a human face, with a sheet of oxidic material? And now you may think, well, why don't we simply take a sheet of this material and wrap it around the target surface? Well, in most cases, you won't get a meaningful result. Because of the complexity of the material, there's a lot of global coupling happening in this geometric linkage inside of the material, so it's really unintuitive how you need to stretch the material on one side and how that will affect the other side of the material and how you can uh, align it with all the features on your target surface. So we look into material properties more closely, and what we found is that there is this nice connection to this beautiful theory in differential geometry called conformal mapping that allows us to create an algorithm that can automatically solve this problem. And the first thing we learned is that it is really important what is the 2D layout of the material you use to approximate your target shape. And the other thing we get with our algorithm is exactly how much you need to stretch the material locally in order to approximate a given shape. Now, without geometry, this was impossible. This design would be completely impossible to create because of this unintuitive 2D layout and the stretching and all the features you have to take into consideration together to get a result like this one. And another interesting property of oxidic materials is that they're also transformable. So with a single piece of this material, you can approximate many different shapes. And as much as this is interesting for many different applications, it can also be pretty hard to fix the material in the particular configuration that you computed with your algorithm. Now this challenge inspired our next research question, which is to design a new class of materials we call programmable oxidics. And the, the idea behind it is that given a target shape, we program a 2D material to be able to approximate exactly that 3D shape once inflated. So essentially, what we're doing here, we are encoding a three-dimensional surface into a flat sheet of material. And now the only thing we have to do is to simply inflate it to its maximum, so stretch out the material to its maximum, and it will go to the prescribed shape. Now, why is this interesting? For example, in practice, we can use this technology to design heart stents that are uh, inserted into the heart of a patient to unclog a black blood vessel. And typically, these stents are made straight and regular, but there is a 2016 study that argues that this is problematic for patients with uh, blood vessels that are clogged but that are curved. So with our technology, we can scan a patient's heart, we can detect the problematic region, reconstruct the 3D model of uh, the clogged vessel, and automatically generate a patient-specific um, heart stand that is curved. So this is really patient-specific implant that was completely automatically generated. Another interesting application of programmable auxetics is uh, we can use them to design Mars habitats. And because the pressure on Mars is 10 times lower than the pressure on Earth, the habitat anyways needs to be pressurized. And with this technology, we can conveniently pack the flat sheet of material in a box, then ship it to Mars, and simply inflate it on site without any additional construction material or scaffolding. And we're just scratching the surface uh, of what can be done with algorithmic approaches to design. Many other challenging problems can be found in, for example, outer space structures, for satellites, for solar panels, and for transformable objects that are hard or even impossible to generate uh, manually. And with computational approaches, we can enable patient-specific medical devices like implants, like prosthetics, and ultimately organ printing. And we can also use computational approaches to automatically design better architectures for neural networks and find better performing hyperparameters. 
And my question is, how can we automate the design process in order to accelerate the discovery of better performing designs? And I very much look forward to see how we answer these questions in the future.